So your first film, yeah, uh, you made in two thousand one, right? Mm. Uh, what took you so long? What to have make I been it? doing since then? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was a writer for television and to pay the rent. I was a writer for television and and features. Okay. For about ten years and um, directed an episode of Robbery Homicide Division and directed just previous to shooting Texas Killing Fields an episode of Friday Night Lights. And what was it about this material that? felt was right for your second feature? I was, you know, the the screenplay was was great. Um, before even reading the screenplay, there was research that came with the screenplay that um, there was in particular this this map of where some of the bodies had been found and some and with photos of the of the victims. And that I spent a lot of time looking at that. I sort of found myself standing in the middle of my living room looking at this map for a long time and, and that's what you know, really compelled me to try to help tell the story in whatever way I could. And at that point, there was, um, there was certainly, there was no cast, there was no budget, there was nothing. There was just sort of an inkling of a hope that I'd get an opportunity to try to help tell the story um, by directing it. And you know, in the end, end up talking to people like you at the end of the day. But, um, but that was really the inspiration. It's a pretty appalling phenomenon, the fact that there could be all of these bodies buried yeah. in this place, and that it's still unsolved, right? There's tw approximately 27 of the 50-some-odd um, cases that are still unsolved, yeah. Now, is, are there any theories as to why this sort of place became a dumping ground for these bodies? When, you, when you're when at the locations, it's, it, it makes sense. Um, it's not, it's along I-45. The terrain is kind of scrub brush. Uh, it, it's outside of Texas City, um, but I, I would say that, you know, this isn't a phenomenon of crime that I think is in any way particular to Texas. I actually think that the, the, one of the things that I found compelling about the story is that there are so many different perpetrators. So since 1969, this has been going on. So I, it felt to me like there was something beyond um, you know, an area where, where these things are happening and we have a detective story to talk about it. There was something that seemed sort of ubiquitous about this. I felt like this is something that happens, I'm sure, in other parts of the country, nationwide. This is something that happens globally. This is something about um, how we, uh, as a, a society, create perpetrators and also how we create victims um, and, and that relationship. Now, you're obviously the the daughter of Michael Mann, famous director, uh, but you grew up pretty far away from Hollywood, right? Yeah, I grew up in, in Indiana. So how did that sort of inform your perspective towards filmmaking? Well, um, how did it form my perspective towards filmmaking? Well, I feel incredibly, you know, when I, I did a lot of photography, spent way too much time in the dark room as a kid, and, and always wrote and read a lot. Um, there, the little town that I grew up in didn't have a movie theater and only had one television channel. So there was a lot of reading and a lot of storytelling. So it means what you do when you're a kid, you know. You, um, there's not much going on in your small town. Um, and then I, I feel really lucky that that, and I played viola, and I feel really lucky that at 16 I was able to walk on to a, you know a set of my dad's television show, and it all kind of clicked. It all made sense to me that. Film is the medium where you can use the photography and the music and the storytelling, obviously, yeah. and and uh, so I, f I, I feel fortunate that I was uh, that I was lucky enough to sort of f not only have the to f a have the desire to tell stories and then get have access to the medium that made sense for me. Cool.